we um, are going to give you an overview of United Way, kind of what we've been doing um, since everything's happened with the COVID-19 pandemic and with everything going on with race and equity in not just Greensboro, but across the entire country. Um, we've been really active in both of those arenas. Um, we'll also cover just what, what we're trying to do that's new this year. Um, we'll talk about our 2021 car giveaway. We just gave away a car yesterday to one of our campaign donors uh, who gave in the 2019 campaign. That was going to be an in-person live event in April and obviously had to be canceled. So we incorporated it into our campaign kickoff, uh, which was also virtual. And then we'll cover campaign best practices with you, talk about um, virtual campaign options, if that's something that you want to do. Um, we as United Way staff have been working remotely since mid-March um, and are going to continue to work remotely um, until at least the 4th of January. So if if you need to have us meet in person, that is perfectly fine. Uh, but you know, we'll maintain social distancing, wear masks, do whatever we need to do. Uh, but you know, we'll try to do as many things virtually this year as we can. Um, just a few notes: my team is on the call. I'm going to have them monitor the chat box. So if anyone has questions, uh, wants to ask a question, you know, we will just raise your hand using in the participants feature um, and we will call on you or if you want to unmute yourself, that's also fine. Um, and we have time for questions at the end too, but if there's a burning question on something that we're covering, um, feel free to ask away. And then, <coughs> Without further ado, then I will move it forward into introductions. Um, so on the call today, we have myself, um, campaign director. We also have Nadine Malpass, who's our senior vice president of resource development. Nadine, say a quick hello. Thank you guys so much for everything that you do. We know that you have full-time jobs and wonderful companies, and you still are committed to United Way and leading your campaign. So just thank you so very much. We know it's gonna be different this year, but I think we have everything um, under control and we'll be ready to um, hopefully um, provide everything that you need to have for a successful campaign. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nadine. Uh, we also have Carl Jones, who is our senior campaign manager. Hello, hello. And Steven Simpson, a campaign manager. Good morning, everybody and Charles Gray, who is also a campaign manager. Good morning. And the majority of you have worked or will be working with Carl, Stephen, or Charles. Um, so if you are not connected with them yet, uh, we will make sure you get connected after today's training. Um, before I jump in, I wanted to look and see, is Michelle on the call yet? I know Michelle Gathers clark our president and CEO, wanted to hop in and, and give a quick hello. Um, I don't see... Michelle listed as being on yet. So we might pause at some point um, for when Michelle joins. She was coming from another meeting and wanted to stop in and say hello and welcome to everyone. Uh, but before we get started, since we have a good number of people on the call, normally if this was in person, we would do some sort of icebreaker um, and introdu introduce everyone that are acting as employee campaign managers or ECMs um, is the acronym that we tend to use. Uh, but because we are virtual and for the sake of time, uh, we are going to attempt to do a poll. So I have put the poll up on the screen. And I'll give everyone a few minutes to answer. We just want to know, to give, get an idea of how many people are on the call, um, how many years have you served as an ECM? Is this your first year? And if so, welcome. Um, or if you've been ECM for just a few years, two to five, five to 10, or more than 10. And it looks like we've got about 75% of people who've responded. So I'll give it a few more seconds. Alrighty. 
So it looks like most of the people on the call have been ECM for at least a year or more, um, but we do have about a quarter of them who is the first year. So welcome. We're really excited to have you here. Hopefully this is um, a really helpful training for you to get an idea of what your role is. Um, and what we can do at the end of this call too is um, make sure we share your guys' names and contact information with each other so that if you ever have any questions um, and want to connect with another volunteer um, who's working on a workplace campaign, we would be happy to do that. Um, we appreciate you guys so much because we can't do our fundraising every year without you. Uh, so you are our everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, you help us out so much and we just we can't thank you enough for all that you do um, whether it's you know coordinating meetings for your employees helping distribute pledge forms helping organize volunteer opportunities um, throughout the year just being an advocate for united way um, in your organization and in in the community in general you guys are just incredible and we thank you so much for all of your time because we know that this is a volunteer position uh, and it is on top of your regular full-time job uh, so we just are very very appreciative of it oh, and let me close that so i am going to hand it over now to carl who's going to give you a united way overview sure so I want to echo uh, the sentiments of, of Julia and Nadine. Guys, we really, really appreciate um, everything that you do, um, really and truthfully. Even if you were voluntold um, to be an ECM, uh, we couldn't do the work that we do without you guys. Um, it's it's a, a small group of us that are here at United Way working on, um, you know, trying to raise money in our community and, and trying to make impact in our community. Um, and without you, uh, we wouldn't be able to do that. So again, thank you uh, for everything that you guys are doing in the community. Um, so real quick, what is United Way? Um, I had this question when I first started at United Way. You know, I see things um, on TV. Um, I see Cam Newton running in the end zone and I see a little United Way logo and I'm like, okay, well, I know they do really good things. So we want to really break it down in exactly what United Way does um, globally and then what United Way does on a local level. So United Way is a worldwide network of local organizations that bring people together um, from neighborhoods, governments, businesses, faith groups, nonprofits, and schools to tackle community issues. Um, United Way is focused on cr creating community-based, community-led solutions. So a lot of times when we talk about United Way, um, you, like I said, you see that global brand, but each individual United Way is similar to a franchise. So we really are keying in and focusing on local issues. What is it affecting our local uh, community? What are, what are the things that people are coming to us and telling us, this is something that we need to tackle in our community? So next slide, Julia. So um, where is United Way? So there are 12, a little over 1,200 United Ways in the U.S. Um, there are over 1,800 uh, United Ways throughout the entire world um, in 40 countries and uh, six continents. So it's, it's, a, it's a, like I said, a, a very large, um, a very large entity, United Way of, of our hub, our, our main office in, is in Alexander, Virginia. Um, so that is where we, we report to, I guess you would say, but um, we all, each United Way is going to focus on their local issues and what's impacting their communities. So as I mentioned, local. Uh, the United Way of Greater Greensboro, we have been in Greensboro for 98 years. Um, and we are extremely excited about being here for 98 years. Not a lot of um, not a lot of nonprofits can say they've been in communities for 98 years and, and continue to make impact. Um, we, we, you, us raised $8.6 million um, last year uh, for local impact, for ending poverty. Uh, we have over 20, we have 25 employees. We have over 5,400 volunteers, which volunteers are you guys. Uh, volunteers are impact councils. Volunteers are um, you know, everybody that contributes that are, are willing to, to get their hands dirty and really to focus on this issue of ending poverty. 
Um, and then we have over 30 community partners, strategic partners that uh, we work with um, to make sure that we can, we can make that local impact of ending poverty. So our response to COVID-19. So this is something that was probably going to come up out of, um, you know, a lot of communications, a lot of things when you're sitting down with your staff or your employees, they're going to ask what United Way did as far as COVID-19. Um, so in the time of the disaster, the city of Greensboro and Gifford County and Gifford County officials included United Way in their relief, in their relief efforts. So what that looks like is United Way, what we know we're really good at is we're really good at collecting dollars and making sure we can make impact in our community. So with COVID relief, um, what we did was we reached out to, you know, city of Greensboro and Guilford County um, and raised a little bit over $2.2 million um, in Greensboro virus, in our Greensboro virus uh, relief task force, which was made up, I believe, of a little over eight individuals. I mean, those $2.2 million went out to 100 local nonprofits in response to COVID-19. So we didn't make any of the decisions as far as the dollars that were raised, the $2.2 million that were raised for the, for the relief fund. Um, that was a decision that was made with the city and the county. We were just the individuals that actually collected the dollars. Um, and then we were the ones to actually distribute those dollars. Um, the Federal CARES Act, we raised a little bit over $2.3 million, I believe, for the CARES Act. So in all, it was a little bit over $5 million that we um, collected all in all to hand out to the community um, in response to COVID-19. So again, we were the individuals, we were the entity that collected those dollars, but we weren't the individuals to, act to actually make those decisions. We were in collaborative effort with the city and the county uh, to determine what local nonprofits need that help. Um, and they apply, they almost apply similar to a grant. Um, and then we distributed those dollars out to those, to those local nonprofits. So we really made, we were really excited. We, we made a lot of impact in the community. You made a lot of impact in the community um, around the COVID-19 response. Um, and then also, you know, racial equity and, and justice. Uh, we know, you know, as far as what's going on in our communities and in the country right now, um, this is a hot topic. This is something that is going on in our community. So we um, stepped out on a ledge and we led four community conversations around racial equity and justice to identify issues and common themes that need to be addressed in order to create systemic change. Um, and what does that look like? We reached out to community leaders um, and we wanted to hear from the community about what you're seeing as far as racial equity and justice, what can United Way do to fill in that gap? Um, and how can we be um, a, talking, a talking head for individuals in our community um, that are experiencing this? Um, so that was our response and we're still um, on the ground floor. We're working internally to examine some of our policies. Um, we have uh, round table discussions with our internal team about procedures and bylaws and things. How can we change the culture of racial uh, equity inside of our organization? And then externally, uh, we're evaluating with our partners to ensure that we're collaborating on strategies um, and, and are inclusive about support systems that are gonna make system-wide change. So um, it's an ongoing process, um, but it's something that we are committed to as a United Way. Um, we are, uh, here for social justice and we just want to make sure that that we stand in for those individuals that might not have a voice because we know we talk about ending poverty <clears throat> excuse me um in our communities um that you know COVID-19 racial inequities all of that stuff contributes and will contribute even more to the 57,000 individuals that we we currently have um in poverty so So what is the problem? I just mentioned it. So prior to the pandemic, one in five residents and 25% of our children in Greensboro were living in poverty, um, which is something we, we decided uh, probably six years ago um, when we talked about in the poverty was something that we just couldn't accept. Um, that's over 57,000 people that are struggling to meet their basic needs. Um, Greensboro is ranking 31% above the national average when it looks at poverty. 
Um, so when we look at the poverty, actually the poverty guidelines, um, a family of four making $26,200 as an annual income is, is poverty, is what is considered poverty. And we all know that if you're making $26,200, uh, $26, it's going to be extremely tough to afford housing, to afford, um, you know, education for your kids, travel, food, et cetera. But even if you jump that up to $35,000 for a family of four, even if you jump that up to $40,000 for a family of four, it's still going to be a struggle. So how can we bridge that gap as a United Way? How can we reach out to individuals in our community and give them a hand up and not a hand out? Um, poverty makes it hard for individuals to graduate and to succeed in college and build their careers. So what we talk about a lot of the times are the ABCs of um, getting a job. So we want to make sure that we get individuals in our communities a job. And once we get them a job, we want to get them a better job. And from that better job, we want to get them in to a career. We want to put them on a path to succeeding and success because if we can get them on that path and we know that it trickles down to their children and then we can change the whole trajectory of generational poverty um, in that family. Um, and also when we talk about poverty and a lot of times we, we segment a, a, a particular part of the community that uh, might be in poverty that might be high impoverished area, high um, high you know, high uh, unemployment rate, et cetera. Um, but poverty affects us all. Poverty affects us as far as uh, individuals and, and companies moving to Greensboro. Um, it, you know, if, if, if poverty is extremely high, a lot of the times crime is going to be high and companies don't necessarily want to move to somewhere where, you know, the crime rate is, is astronomical. You know, we look at housing, housing rates. When, when poverty is high in, in, a, in a city or a community, um, you know, you're going to pay a premium for, for, for housing. So it affects us all. Um, it's not just East Greensboro. It's not just West Greensboro. It's Greensboro as a whole. And that's why we made such a strategic uh, decision to say, hey, we need to focus on our community. We need to focus on breaking the cycle of poverty in our community so we can have a better Greensboro. So how are we doing it? Um, so the United Way is, a, is a, the only local nonprofit that this holistic approach is to ending poverty. Um, we want to replace poverty with self-sufficiency that requires more than a handout, which I mentioned before. It requires the community working together, uh, people achieving long-term success, which I mentioned with the ABCs. And we connect people with opportunities. We, uh, we all deserve housing. We all deserve jobs. We all deserve education. We all deserve health care. That is something that is, is a common thread to being a citizen in, in America, in the United States. So that's something we want to strive for, especially in Greensboro, and making sure that everybody has those opportunities. So you see over to the right um, how that little cycle works. So we want to make sure babies are born healthy and adults have access to child care, or access to care, excuse me. Um, child, children learn to read and develop character skills. Adults earn their GEDs and land new jobs and build careers, and neighbors have the resources they need to be successful. We want to make sure every individual in Greensboro has those opportunities, and the only way we can do that is to do the work that we're doing and the help and the and the work that you're helping us do and raising the dollars to make sure that we can get it to the individuals in our community that really, really need this help, um, and really make sure that we're putting our, our foot forward and making people uh, making people get out of that cycle of continuing to be in generational poverty. So how would we do this work except even even more? So we talk about our family success center. So I'm sure some of you have been to our family success centers. Um, so the family success center is a uh, is a holistic approach to how we can, you know, reach a family um, through the children through the parents and through the grandparents. So we have two, uh, currently two family success centers. Our first family success center is located at Gifford Child Development. Um, and we just recently celebrated, Julia, are we on your six? Six, yeah. So our six year anniversary with the family, first family success center. And we're about a year and a half in, almost two years into our second family success center at the, uh, at the Salvation Army um, Center of Hope. Um, so, like I said, the Family Success Center, if you haven't had a chance to attend 
I think we're going to be trying to work on some, some virtual tours to, to look at the Family Success Center, but it's really a cool, um, cool approach to reaching out to an entire family. So make sure we're getting children um, health care, make sure we're getting children, having, you know, uh, mothers and, and, and fathers access to, um, to care for their children while they're trying to go get their GED, um, while they're having, where they're able to take classes. Um, we have a yoga class in there. We have opportunities for people to get job training. Uh, we have computers. So we have an opportunity for somebody, I don't know if you've ever had an opportunity to fill out an application on your phone, but it's extremely hard. So we want to make sure that we have access to computers where people can come to the Family Success Center, get on a computer and fill out an application. And if they have questions, we have coaches there. And the coaches at the Family Success Center are not just coaches that are going to be there um, and be working with a family one day and be gone the next. Um, I always like to tell a story about a guy named Jay Webb, who's at the Family Success Center, who's a coach. Um, he worked with a gentleman um, from when we started six years ago. Um, and through that, through the progression of that relationship, um, the gentleman that he works with is working at a Fortune 200, uh, Fortune 100 company, I believe, and he was the best man at his wedding. Um, so after six years, uh, they built that core relationship. So it's about building relationships at the Family Success Center, and it's also about meeting people where they are um, and making sure that we can, we can lift individuals um, and, and, and being able to help them, whatever success looks like for them, we just want to be there for whatever the success that they determine they want to have in their lives. Um, 211, um, hopefully you guys are familiar with 211. 211 is a service that's provided um, through United Way, through United Ways throughout the entire state. So uh, from Asheville to Wilmington to Charlotte, um, 211 is available and it's a resource that is essentially there to help in the time of need. So a lot of the times when you see people panhandling on the side of the road, um, instead of giving them a dollar, a lot of times I give them a 211 card because 211 will put them in touch with individuals in our community and, and, and entities in our community that can help them out of whatever situation they might be in. Um, so, you know, there's instances where um, if somebody's house catches on fire, and they don't know where to turn to. They don't know where to get help. They can call 211, 24 7, 365, and somebody will be able to get them um, to the right individual that can help them. Um, they can even go to the, the point of 211 if, if you're moving to North Carolina and you don't know where to get your license uh, renewed, where to go. You could call 211 and they can get you in touch with that service. Um, you know, if you needed a lawyer and you didn't know where to go, 211 would be the access that you needed. So 211 is a resource um, that even Governor Cooper talks about when we had the tornadoes come through um, Greensboro, when we had the hurricanes come through um, at the coast. 211 is that resource that when people need help, when people don't know where to turn, 211 is where you can call and get that help. Um, and then our volunteer led strategy. So that's talking about, you know, having ECMs. Um, having our impact councils, which are impact councils are individuals that make the decisions essentially on where funding goes when we raise the dollars in the community um, and who we support and our strategic partners. Um, and then we talk about our partners as far as our affinity groups. So we have um, African American um, leaders, we have Women United, and we have young leaders. So those are affinity groups that are key to helping us um, get the message out about what United Way of Greater Greensboro is trying to do and end in poverty. Um, on top of that, we, as a, the impact councils and the investments that we make, uh, we invest in the community. We take those dollars and we invest those dollars into our community because we feel like we um, know what impact we can make in the community and, and the needs that are, are um, you know, wrapped around end in poverty in our community. That's how we, that's how we determine and that's how um, we do the work that we do in trying to end the cycle of, of, of poverty. Here's a quick little video that's going to kind of wrap up um, what I was talking about. We are united in so many ways by our needs, struggles, 
tears, but we are also united by our smiles, dreams, and desires to help one another. At United Way of Greater Greensboro, we are committed to bringing the community together to solve our greatest needs. That's why we stand united for justice, peace, and equity, and will continue to challenge everyone in our community to do the same. It's why we led local collaborative efforts to raise and distribute over $3 million in coronavirus relief, helping people and businesses. In our recent experiences as a community, we've witnessed a pandemic thrust many people into poverty. And we've heard the voices of people who've been systematically forced into poverty for centuries. And while we continue to grow together as a community, we believe no child, no adult, no family should live in poverty. And that's why we will continue creating partnerships that are working together to end local poverty. Through collaboration, we can connect people to opportunities we all deserve, like housing, jobs, education, and health care. The future of the greater Greensboro community is bright, but many people still need your help. United, we can help people find a place to call home, connect people to jobs that can take care of their families, help children and teachers who are discovering new ways to learn. And United, we can help people access what they need to live a healthy and safe life. Our community is stronger when we work together and nothing is impossible. You can make a difference. Please help lift children, adults, and families out of poverty by making a donation to United Way today. So if you guys have any questions, uh, you know, I'm available. Um, you can send the questions if you want to put them in the group chat, group chat as well, and we'll answer them as we, as we uh, see fit or as we can. Um, but what I'm going to do now is, uh, if you, there aren't any questions, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Stephen and Charles for the next part. Any questions? All right, Stephen Charles. All right, um, I'm going to kick us off. Good morning, everybody. I see a lot of faces and names that I recognize, and it's good to see you all here this morning. We're going to um, start off by what's new at United Way. Um, which is obviously running virtual campaigns, and we'll get into that a little bit later. And um, this is our third year giving away a car. This year it'll be a 2021 um, Toyota Camry. And um, the next slide will show you how you can get certain entries. But um, if you hold a rally virtually, um, or if you're able to do it in your office, if you're um, in the office, uh, you will receive an extra drawing. So, Julia. So, for those of you who are new, you probably um, haven't seen this, um, whether you're new to the organization or new to United Way completely. But this breaks down um, if you were to be paid on a bi weekly basis, that's 24 pay periods of um, how much essentially it will be for you to enter the car giveaway. Um, we, to be eligible, uh, we require at least $100, um, your personal email address, and um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, oh, and you donate to um, either United Way solely, and we'll pass it off to um, all the strategic partners that we fund. So essentially by giving to United Way, um you're helping multiple organizations or if you give to a specific organization um, within um our strategic partners then uh that will have you eligible as well but you have um four entries to win um and here's the breakdown 100 200 300 and a thousand so if there's any questions i can go more into detail about that um and we just gave away a car yesterday. So um, Miss Clay from Blue Scope Steel um, won the car. So that's exciting. So it is a real thing, y'all. So. <laughs> so getting into campaign best practices, um, we'll start off with the plan. Um, sorry, can you go to the next slide? Perfect. So 
first and foremost, um, assemble a team and plan your campaign. Failing to plan is planning to fail. So jump starting it um, and just ensuring that you have a strong support team. Um, we understand that some people are voluntold to do certain things, uh, but you can still get excited and uh, be able to have some good ideas with um, the team that you have. So whatever cards you're uh, dealt, just um, go strong with that. Um, we do suggest getting senior management involved, um, seeing management involved in United Way um, motivates people. I know um, when I first um, heard about United Way, I wasn't too sure what it was, but getting involved in uh, the planning process definitely gave me more of an insight and um, understanding. Develop a schedule. Um, and one important thing I do want to point out is to ensure that you run the campaign within three weeks or less. Um, we love United Way, obviously, but we don't want people to get burnt out. Um, and we found that anything over that three week period, um, people start to disengage. So um, obviously it may be a virtual campaign this year due to um, our new normal. Um, but there are still ways that um, we can make it successful with planning. The second um, campaign best practice is inspire, um, you know, sharing stories and that impact. Um, a little later on in the presentation, we'll show you where we have stories um, that you all can use. But um, one of the best practices, number three on here, is if you have anybody within your organization or you yourself have benefited from United Way, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a Greater Greensboro, if it was United Way of Chicago, um, please share that story and um, have the employees share their stories if they're willing and able to, um, somebody that they can connect with um, to connect with United Way as well. Um, and the third best practice is engage. Again, this is very important, especially with everything moving online. There are still ways for us to engage virtually, um, even virtual volunteer opportunities. Um, and just um, with everything, um, like Carl was mentioning, the Family Success Center, hopefully we are able to get something virtually um, for that or even going back to the stories, we do have um, resources to get people engaged and within the uh, United Way campaign. Um, and whether you have been at ECM for 10 plus years or if this is your first year, um, there are still new things that you can do. Um, for the 10 plus years, I know you have a lot of experience and are able to um, draw on that and you have your own best practices, um, what went well, what went wrong. Um, so um, if you need some something to ensure that you're um, being engaging, our team is willing to help. And so now I'm gonna turn it over to Charles. Thanks, Stephen. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, so the fourth best practice is to make sure that you have an official ask within your campaign. You would never truly know if someone is going to give unless you ask. And there are various ways that, that you can ask officially within your campaign. Um, so that could be a leadership campaign. It could be a kickoff event that, um, that I've seen done very well this past year from my experience being, being here uh, with United Way of Greater Greensboro. And also another way that we can help assist is you wanna make sure that you offer multiple ways that someone can give. Um, and with United Way, we, we have plenty of opportunities that you will learn later that people can give virtually, if people want to give more of the traditional way, we just have different um, ways that someone can give. There are three recommendations that we like to include uh, whenever you make the official ask. The first one is if it's relevant to you. If you do give to United Way, be sure to share with others why you give to United Way. You, um, a lot of times we are not sure or we are not aware of how inspiring our personal story can be on others. And when we share why we give, whether that's just through knowing about United Way and the impact that it's making in our local community, 
or whether that is a personal story of you living in poverty and receiving the assistance that United Way of Greater Greensboro provides, it can be very inspiring to others to want to join the movement that we are leading to end poverty. A second recommendation that we have is to be sure to share how poverty affects us all. You learned this a little bit with Carl earlier, as he mentioned, but here on the screen, this is just a short list of many things of how poverty affects us all. Poverty, there, there's a correlation to higher unemployment, slower economic development, lower academic achievement, lower housing values, values increase in taxes, increase in crime. When you share information like this that a lot of us at some point of time in our life can relate to, it will inspire others to at least strongly consider to want to provide resources that United Way of Greater Greensboro provides to help address poverty in the Greater Greensboro area. The third recommendation when making the official ask is also to share the impact that United Way is making um, in our community to address poverty. Now we do have a campaign toolkit that you will learn that will be available that will uh, share more information, uh, more that you see here on the screen. But these are just a few bullet points to share certain outcomes that United Way is making to address poverty. For instance, you see the first bulletin here to ensure babies are born healthy and adults have access to health care, helping children learn to read and develop character skills, help people earn GEDs and helping them to get a job and then also helping um, our community to have uh, more accessibility to basic resources that are needed to reach self-sufficiency. Next slide, Julia. And then the fifth uh, that, that we recommend here uh, for best practices is to make sure that you thank donors. Um, let them know what they are contributing to. If there was a goal that is set within your campaign, let everyone know what they did and how they contributed to it. And we also can assist to, to let um, your coworkers know the impact that, that, that they're making through uh, the resources that were raised, um, the volunteerism that, that was created or, or led in your campaign. So be sure to say thank you. Um, and it's also very recommended that if you can, when you have your executive leadership, such, such as your CEO, when they are able to participate and also be able to thank the coworkers, we have seen that it, it's very um, helpful and influential and it helps to show that it, it is just more than just you giving to United Way. It is an overall movement that is community led to truly address poverty. And then lastly, when it comes to thanking the donors, uh, we really appreciate whenever we get the accurate data because uh, when we get the results of the campaign, when you give us accurate data, we are able to help you thank the donors. We are able to give those updates to donors and to let others know that thank you for giving, but also we're able to give those updates throughout the year to show where, where their money is going and the impact and the progress that we are making to address poverty in the community. And then lastly, for best practices, which I know that this is going to be a challenge for all of us right now is um, our work environments are very different right now between um, individuals still working virtually and those that are also um, in the office again, be sure to bring the fund through special events. Now, this is definitely going to be challenging because traditional special events that a lot of us are used to participating in, it may not be available this year. But there are still some things for those who are working re re remotely that um, you can still do. So like a silent auction or a rebel, there are ways that you can do that virtually. And um, for anyone that is interested in still hosting special events, but to do it virtually, um, we highly encourage you just to reach out to us because things are just gonna be different depending on your working environment and what's available and what resources are, are available and what works best in your current sit situation. And we just really hope that you reach out to one of the campaign managers here so that we can um, find the best way for you to have virtual campaigns or virtual special events. And then also incentives, regardless of COVID of us working virtually um, or still working in the office, that is still a great way to get people involved um, I know me, me personally, I love to be able to win extra time to, to get off. Uh, so P, PTO, we have the Caring Club cards. Um, you can still do virtual gift cards. Uh, just an example of that with the virtual gift cards, um, 
here within our organization, we actually just got virtual gift cards from Panera Bread. Um, so if you were interested in doing things like that and knowing, and knowing some different ways that we can do that, we can definitely assist with that. So I know we've mentioned several times now um, virtual campaigns and kind of wanted to just cover what that might look like. Uh, so I know most of you on today's call um, have probably been collecting pledge forms um, via paper the last several years. Um, we've had some of our larger companies doing online campaigns, um, but we have actually created several different online pledge collection platforms that if you have been doing paper pledge form collection and you want to look into a virtual option, let your account manager know uh, because we have several different ways that we can do it. Um, there's two different online giving forms that we have, and we also have a fillable PDF of our paper pledge form. So we wanted to come up with as many options as we could based on um, your needs, basically. Uh, so just we can talk through what the different options are. I didn't want to go through all of them today, uh, just since it doesn't all apply to different sized organizations. And I know some of you also work for Fortune 500 companies and you have your own pledge collection. Uh, so like I said, if this is something you're interested in, reach out to your account manager because we do have um, an online web-based option as well as a fillable PDF of the pledge form if you prefer to do that. I also wanted to mention collecting cash and checks. Um, we you know, get a lot of donations that come from cash and checks every year. And typically what that looks like is if you are in the office, um, we would have you as the ECM collecting all of that with the pledge forms. And if you are still in the office and you're doing your campaign via paper, that is perfectly fine. Uh, but if people are all at home, like we obviously are at United Way, um, we just prefer for those donors to mail us those cash and checks directly or to bring them to the office. Um, we do have people in the office every single day um, and checking our mail every single day. So just so we don't have to worry about you having to collect everything and get it mailed to your organization um, or to you at home if you are at home uh, it doesn't make sense for that to be kind of a kink in the process so we just ask for people to send it to us directly uh, and then charles already mentioned with collecting special events um, we do have a square account where we can collect special event money online um, and so if that's something you're interested in let us know and we can work that out with you um, we also have created some um, easy email templates for you to use to execute your campaign virtually. So not just the pledge collection piece of it, but also just the whole start to finish um, that Stephen and Charles just went through. You know, we have kickoff emails to help you. We've got, you know, mid campaign updates that have impact stories and we have closing campaign emails that you can send out. So we tried to get as many email templates um, put together as we could to help you um, to make it easier. Um, and then also doing virtual rallies and online meetings. Um, you know, we are happy to come join any um, virtual meeting platform that you guys use. So whether it's Zoom or Microsoft Teams or um, WebEx or all the different ones that exist, you know, we're happy to come on a call um, and give a five 10, 15, 30 minute presentation, um, however long you want to be as if we would have been doing it in person. Um, so, you know, whatever works well for the agenda of your meeting, um, we're happy to join. Um, as in years past, you know, we typically say, if you already have a regularly scheduled staff meeting uh, and you can give us five to 10 minutes in the front or end of your agenda, then that's all we need. Uh, to come out and speak to employees and share the message. Um, and like Stephen mentioned, you know, we have the car giveaway again this year. And if you let us come and speak at one of those meetings, um, we will give all of your employees that qualify um, for the car giveaway a drawing for themselves. And so last year we had about 50 companies that we went out and did physical in person meetings at. And so those 50 companies, they had one quarter finalists selected. Um, and then from those quarter finalists, we selected our semi finalists. So you definitely get a leg up um, in your chances in winning if you have us come and speak. And um, 
you know, everything that I just mentioned, if you are in person and you want to do something that follows the, the guidelines of, you know, in-person gatherings, uh, we're happy to do anything in person, um, you know, within reason, uh, but we're also happy to do everything virtually and online too. So we're trying to be as accommodating as we can um, with how crazy the times are right now. So typically in this part of the agenda, we talk about campaign closing procedures. Um, I'm not going to cover that today just because there's so many different pledge collection models out there now. Um, so I would say, you know, talk to your account manager and your pledge collection or your campaign closing procedures will just depend on whether you continue to do paper, if you do the fillable PDF of the pledge form, or if you do one of our online options. Um, so it'll just kind of depend on which one that you are doing. But ways that we can help you, um, you know, any campaign logistics that you need, reporting, um, helping set up e-pledge or online giving, um, setting up the logistics for campaign meetings and, and rallies with employees, uh, volunteer opportunities. Um, if you need ideas and want to brainstorm with us or you want to connect with another ECM who might be of a similar sized organization and you're new and you want to find out what works for them and their organization, um, let us know and we can connect you with each other. Um, we are here for you year round. So if you want to do a special event um, sometime later this year, if you know your office is going to be um, back in person sometime in the spring, hopefully, and you want to do a special event then, that's also perfectly fine. Um, the way we count our campaign is basically from March until February. So anything that occurs between March of 2020 and February of 2021 would be this campaign cycle technically. Um, and then anything obviously in March of 2021 would be next year's campaign. So if you want to do something outside of the typical fall window, um, you are more than welcome. And that also goes for running your campaign as well. I know this fall is a crazy time for all of us. And if you think that doing your pledge collection at a different time of year makes more sense, talk to your account manager about that. Because just because it's always been in the fall, um, it doesn't necessarily make sense for all businesses to continue doing it in the fall. Um, so we're, we're happy to talk through those options with you. Um, campaign materials, uh, you know, normally at this event, we give you all of your pledge forms and posters and um, any information cards we have. Obviously, since things are virtually this year, we don't have any of that. Um, we do have printed pledge forms and can give you physical ones if you need them. But otherwise, we haven't printed any posters or end poverty cards this year. Um, if that's something you're interested in, we do have the PDFs of them and can, um, and can share them with you. And I have a, the campaign toolkit that I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, everything that we have, you can access on the campaign toolkit. Um, so all of the um, images that you've seen today, the links to our videos, um, we've got tons of information sheets that refer to all of the impact stuff that you've heard earlier. We've got poverty statistics. So there's a lot of information on our campaign toolkit. And I highly recommend you perusing that page um, to see what you know might be good to share with your employees. Um, there's so much on there because we know that some people respond to stories and other people respond to data and some people respond to both. Um, so we've tried to put together as many different um, marketing pieces for you guys to help you guys in sharing the message of United Way in a way that will resonate with the employees because it's you that knows the culture of your organization and knows your co coworkers best. Um, so we've tried to come up with many different options for you. Um, I've already men mentioned the messaging and email templates, um, and we've talked about volunteer engagement ideas and opportunities, and that goes it's the same thing for special events. You know, if you want to do a volunteer opportunity um, later in the year, it's something you want to do quarterly. If you want to do a, a big event, um, we can help you uh, organize anything, whether it's small one off to more ongoing. Um, just let your account manager know, and we can, you know, figure out what your budget is and how many people you're thinking of targeting, um, what your interests are and what kind of volunteer opportunity you want to do. And we will find something that works for your organization. 
So some resources for you, I mentioned the campaign toolkit. This also new to this year is a um, story page. So unitedwaygso.org slash stories. And that has a link to just all sorts of different stories um, that you can share that are all about impact. Um, so we, like I mentioned, we've got campaign videos, the video that you saw today. We also have four success story videos this year that you can use, but the last few years, we've kind of had the same format where we've had a main video and then several success stories. Um, so all of those are still available to you. We've got PDF versions of the stories. We've got Word document versions of the stories. We've got photos. Um, so any sort of impact story that you would want to share, um, you can find on the story link. So speaking of stories, um, in closing, um, Kenny is one of the stories that we are highlighting this year um, and because of you and the work that you do and helping all helping your employees find a way to give um, Kenny is no longer homeless and he is leaving poverty behind so you know he like any of us has made a few, few mistakes in his life and those mistakes ended up finding himself without a job and living on the streets uh, but Kenny was connected with one of our strategic partners and got wraparound services that he needed. And, you know, now he has a home. He was able to get a job and he's back in school. Um, and he's on that path that Carl mentioned with, you know, the ABCs of employment with a job. Hopefully he'll get a better job and on his way to a career. So Kenny's story isn't possible without you guys acting as ECMs and helping us with the campaign every single year. So we, on behalf of Kenny, thank you for everything that you do for our community uh, with your everyday jobs and everything you do for our community with your help as a United Way volunteer. Um, and, you know, like I've said, I, I can't appreciate or express appreciation enough um, for everything that you do. And that's all we have today. We're at 1127. Um, so we are much earlier uh, than the 12 o'clock time slot. So we've got plenty of time for questions. Um, Carl, Stephen, Charles, is there anything in the chat box that we need to ask? Or is there anyone that has a question? I'm going to stop screen sharing so I can see um, everyone's faces. We have a new question here from Jamie Simmons. Um, he's saying every year we are told that our financial goal is, have the goals this year been calculated with a different formula to take COVID into account? That's a great question, Jamie. Uh, so what we have done is, we basically just set all the goals flat. Um, but if there is something that you are concerned about with your employees, with your organization. If you, we understand that there have been furloughs and layoffs, and um, there's a lot of concern and question um, within a lot of organizations still. And so, please talk to your account manager about that. You know, if you raised a certain amount in the prior year, and you know that your employee base just isn't the same as it was last year, um, we completely understand that. Um, we have seen um, fundraising trends for nonprofits across the entire country are being projected to be a 20 to 30% decrease, um, which is, you know, obviously understandable with everything that's been going on um, with COVID, but also we are seeing the need increase, um, you know, with $2.2 .2 million given out just in Greensboro or greater Greensboro alone through a COVID relief fund um, to local nonprofits just between April, May, and June um, just signifies, you know, how much need exists right now. And, you know, Carl mentioned that before COVID, we in Greensboro had 57,000 people living in poverty. Um, we don't know yet what that true number is and what the impact of COVID is on the community. So we're trying to be as aware as we can of business disruptions and that your fundraising might be impacted within your organizations. Um, but we also understand that there's still a huge need and that need is growing in our community. And so trying to do our best with, with what we have this year. But um, yeah, we're, we're happy to talk through like what we think is, what you think is realistic for your organization. It's a great question. Julie, Any other questions? 
Um, we have um, someone requesting PDF copies of posters. Um, do we have that available? We do. Yep. So we, I just actually got a text while this uh, training was going on. So we do have PDFs of our end poverty cards and the posters. Um, so if that's something that you are interested in, we have it on the toolkit. And then um, it says GCS typically has a goal per year. Carl, this is probably for you. Um, and they receive that from us. Will they be provided that again this year? Yeah, I answered that one. Um, I answered that one um, to, I believe, Morris um, in private because we'll hold a separate GCS meeting um, towards the end of the month, just going over some GCS procedures. So. Dave um, wants access to historical giving. Um, so we definitely can provide that to him as well. Yeah, and for those of you that are new, um, we can share any campaign history for your company that you're interested in seeing. Um, so, you know, we have data going back as far as 2000, 2001, if your company has been running that long. So whatever, whatever kind of data you want to see, we as long as we have the information, we can pull it and provide it to you. Um, Guilford County sending out e pledge emails to all staff again this year to show the percentage breakdown. Um, I'll get with you personally, uh, Shannon. And for those of you on the call that have been using our e pledge platform the last few years, um, we're kind of acting business as usual with you since you have been running virtually. And um, collecting pledges virtually. So don't anticipate any changes. Um, so those, the what's new piece um, really applies to those of you that have been doing paper pledge forms um, and want to look into virtual options. Any other questions? Last one on here says, as a new ca campaign director, um, will, we, will we be forwarded a timeline to not miss anything? Yeah. Yeah, and so we'll, um, if there's anyone on here that isn't connected with their account manager yet, um, the invitation to this training came from Carl Jones. If you respond back to Carl directly and let him know that you don't know who your account manager is, uh, we'll get you connected with the right person. Um, but we will also share um, the today's PowerPoint and the link to the stories and the link to the toolkit um, for everyone today. Um, and the list of everyone who came <laughs> as well. So if you do want to connect to some with someone, we can share that too. Are there any other questions, Stephen or Charles? Or Carl? Um, okay. Yeah, we have a yeah. um, recording of this. Meeting. Yes, 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 yes. Yep, and I've been recording this too. So we'll share the recording too. And then if forms are done virtually, is there a way to set it up to come back to the employer if it's payroll deduction? Yes. Um, so what we do with our online campaigns is we have everyone give and then at the end of the campaign, after we get everything processed, we will send and we'll have a whole timeline set up um, with you guys on when you need those files back, but um, we will send a payroll file back to you. That's all that I see right now. All righty. Well, thank you so much, guys. We appreciate you taking the time today. Um, please, like I said, if you have any additional questions, reach out to your account manager directly. Um, but like I said, thank you for everything that you have done and continue to do for United Way and for our greater Greensboro community, uh, because we really can't do this um, without you every single year. So we appreciate all of you that have been on this call today.